Hi everyone, my name is Kristen. I'm an instructor with SAS, and today we'll be taking a look at a wide to narrow transpose. So the first thing we want to know is what exactly is a wide table versus a narrow table, and how can we switch from one to the other? Let's start by talking about our wide data. And for this demo, we are going to be using Acura cars data, where you'll notice we have information about different models. And in the wide form of the data, also known as unstacked data, we have one row per entity. So in our case, one row per model. And you'll see all of the information about a particular model is going to be on that row. Now, why data comes in handy when we want to display the data. It typically looks nicer than the narrow form for presentation purposes. Now, the narrow form of our data, also known as stacked, long, or tall data, is where we have multiple rows per entity, which in our case means multiple rows per model. In this case, we have one row for the engine size, one for MPG City, and one for MPG Highway, so three total. And this is useful for a lot of our SAS procedures that require data in the narrow form in order to use them. So let's get started. So I've gone ahead and pulled up the wide form of the data just to give you a refresher of what it looks like. So remember, this is the information for our Acura cars. In the wide form, we have one row per model with all of the information about that model on the row. So in this case, we have the type, MSRP, engine size, MPG city, and MPG highway. And we'd like to transpose so that we have two rows per model, one for MPG city and one for MPG highway. Now we'd also like to include the type information, but we'll end up getting rid of the MSRP and engine size columns. So let's start with a basic PROC transpose step. On the PROC transpose statement, you can use the data equals option to name the input table, which I have called Acura Y. And with just the basics, you will end up with what's considered a true transpose the rows and the columns have been swapped. So you'll notice the first column is a column that contains the names of our original columns, but not all of them, only the numeric columns. By default, PROC transpose transposes numeric data only. If you want to transpose character data, you have to specify. And you'll see we have seven of these call columns those represent the seven models. Now, this is not really what we were looking for. We wanted a wide to narrow transpose. So instead of a true transpose, to tell SAS we want to transpose based on the model, we need to use the by statement. That will define our groups for transposing. So going back to the code, let's add in by and specify model as our entity column. Rerun the code, and you'll see this output gives us much closer to what we're looking for. However, we do have four rows per model, one for each numeric column in the data. Again, the character data was left off. In this case, we're missing type. We also decided we only want MPG City and MPG Highway, so to control the columns being transposed, we use a var statement. So going back over to our code, let's add var and specify we would like to transpose type MPG city and MPG highway. Rerun the code and you'll see that this does give us what we were looking for. However, call one is actually a character column. And that's because we transposed a mix of character and numeric data, and character columns are the only ones that could contain both of those types of values. The alignment ends up being a little bit off. Overall, the column just doesn't really look good. So how about instead of transposing type, we tell SAS carry type over alongside the model column. That way type will be repeated twice 
once for the MPG city row and once for the MPG highway row. So instead of using type on the var statement, let's take it off and add it to the by statement. We run our code. And now you'll see two rows per model, one for MPG city, one for MPG highway, where the model is repeated twice and the type is repeated twice. So this is exactly what we were looking for for our narrow form of the data. Last thing we need to do is just touch up some of the names of things that don't quite look as nice. Now you'll notice that my output table is called data followed by a number. By default, PROC Transpose gives your tables these generic names. Depending on how many times you run your code, you'll see up to that number behind the data. So I'd like to give it a more descriptive name. And to do that, I can use the out option on the PROC Transpose statement. Oops. And I'm gonna call this Acura Narrow, since this is our narrow form of the data. Rerun the code. And notice now Acura Narrow was created. And each time I rerun it, that table will be overwritten. Now the rest of the name changes are going to take place within the table. The underscore name underscore column is the default name for the column that contains the name of the transposed variables, like MPG City and MPG Highway. This shows up with every transpose. So there's actually an option designed specifically for renaming this column. That is going to be on the PROC transpose statement as name equals. We're going to call our new column stat, since that is going to be the statistic that we have for that particular row, either MPG city or MPG highway. Lastly, the call one column can be renamed using the rename equals data set option, which you might already be familiar with from some of your other SAS steps. So let's go back to our code one last time. On the output table, use the rename equals data set option to rename call one to instead be value. Run our code and take a look at our final results. So this is now exactly what we were looking for. We end up with a narrow form of the data, two rows per model. One row contains the MPG city information and the other contains the MPG highway information. For more tips and tricks like this, check out the links listed below in the description. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to leave a comment for me and don't forget to subscribe to the SAS users channel.